Hey guys, welcome back. It's Kaylee. Now that we know how to evaluate absolute value inequalities, we're going to test solutions to absolute value inequalities. Ready? Let's try it out. So we have an inequality here that says the absolute value of X is greater than 15. And we're going to test solutions to determine when this is true. Testing solutions is a fancy way of saying we're going to plug in different values of X and determine if the statement is true or false. That doesn't sound so bad, huh? We've done that before. So starting with the first one, is the inequality true when X equals negative 12? So first, we need to evaluate the absolute value of negative 12. So if I plug 12 into my expression here, I have the absolute value of negative 12 is greater than 15. So let's evaluate this. Negative 12 is a distance of 12 from zero. Is 12 greater than 15? So is it true that 12 is greater than 15? Nope. So that means negative 12 is not a solution to the inequality. Great, let's do the next one. Is negative 27 a solution to the inequality? We find that out by plugging in our new x value. And then we evaluate our absolute value of negative 27, which is positive 27, a distance of 27 from zero is 27 greater than 15. It sure is, this is true. So negative 27 is a solution to the inequality. Now how about this last one? It's our first possible solution with a positive number as x. So let's plug it in. If we have the absolute value of eight, is that greater than 15? Now the absolute value of eight, we know what that is, right? It's just eight. Is eight greater than 15? It definitely isn't, so that means eight is not a solution to our inequality. Nice work. Do you think you have the hang of it now? Okay, now let's try one that's a little different. This one says the absolute value of X is greater than or equal to zero. Let's test our solutions. Starting with our first one, is negative 10 a solution to our inequality? Well, we know how to figure it out. We plug negative 10 into our absolute value and we have the absolute value of negative 10 is greater than or equal to zero. And if we evaluate our absolute value, we know negative 10 is a distance of 10 from zero. So we have 10 is greater than or equal to zero. Is 10 greater than or equal to zero? Of course. So negative 10 is a solution to our inequality. How about the next one? Is zero a solution? Well, if we plug it in, we will have the absolute value of zero is greater than or equal to zero. And if we evaluate our absolute value of zero, well, that's right, it's just zero. Is zero greater than or equal to zero? Well, that equal sign tells me, yes, these things can be equal. So zero is a solution to our inequality. So how about this last one? Does 45 make our inequality true? Well, let's test it out. The absolute value of 45 greater than or equal to zero. And if I evaluate this, I know it's just positive 45. And now is this inequality true? Yeah, so 45 is a solution. We're really getting these now. Hmm, what do you notice about all of our x values? Yeah, they're all true, they're all solutions. Can you think of why that might be? Here's a hint. Is the absolute value of a number ever negative? No, right? That's the fancy thing about absolute value. It's always positive or zero. And is every positive number greater than or equal to zero? Yeah, <laughs> they're all greater than zero. And that's what makes them positive in the first place, right? So for this special inequality, 
every single possible value of x will be a solution. Okay, last example. It says the absolute value of x is less than negative 8, and we're going to test these solutions. But before we start, I want us to take a good look at our inequality. What is this saying? It is asking us for what values of x will the absolute value be less than negative 8? Well, what do we know about absolute values? Yeah, they're always positive or zero. So no matter what value we plug into x in our absolute value, what type of number will we get? Yeah, a positive number. Can you think of any positive numbers that are less than negative 8? No way! Positive numbers are always greater than negative numbers. So do you think any of these test solutions will give us a true inequality? Nope! But let's test them just to be sure. So here I have negative 2, so if I plug that into my absolute value, I'll have negative 2 is less than negative 8, or the absolute value of negative 2 is less than negative 8. The absolute value of negative 2 will give me positive 2 less than negative 8. Is this true? Mm, no way, we already knew that, right? Okay, let's test our next one. It says x is equal to positive 13. Okay, positive number. What happens if we plug that in? The absolute value of 13 is that less than negative 8. Absolute value of 13, still a distance of 13 from 0. Is that less than negative 8? Mm, no, this positive number is definitely bigger than this negative number. Okay, last little test here. We have x is equal to negative 9. Could that be a solution? Let's see. Absolute value of negative 9 is less than negative 8. Okay. If there were no absolute value signs here, we had just negative 9 is less than negative 8, that would be true. But since we have absolute value, we know that negative 9 absolute value would be just 9. Is that less than negative 8? Nope. Because once again, we have a positive number, which is never going to be less than a negative number. So this confirms what we thought. There are no solutions to this inequality that will ever make it true because absolute values can never be negative. That was such great work. Testing solutions to inequalities is going to be super important as we get further along in our algebra studies. Just one more video to go before you get to practice on your own. In that one, we will look at absolute value in the real world. Hey, hey.